Hello folks, we're back on the What Car website again today and another article by Claire Evans, this time on the most reliable older, smaller cars. So these are small cars that are between 6 and 20 years old. Obviously much of the focus in these surveys is often on newer cars, but obviously lots of you out there are buying cars between 6 and 20 years old. So hopefully you'll like this one. And all this information is basically the collated responses from the Motor Easy survey for 2023. Now just before we get onto that folks, you'll see this little Audi A1 here, which is quite a handsome little chap, KO15 HNT. I'm going to pop that into Vehicle Score. If you don't know about Vehicle Score yet, it's a website that helps you score how good or bad a used car is based on a number of different things, but it looks at MOT history, mileage, uh, the kind of issues it's had on the MOTs, all sorts of things to score. Uh, let's just click on it now. Well, we've got a 999. That's a top score on this one. Okay. Um, average score on an Audi A1 of that kind is 736. This one's 999. So why is that? It's had a long-term owner, low overall mileage. Uh, last MOT had no comments and the MOT's recent pass rate is high. Uh, you've got lots of data on the car there. You can see the annual mileage. Um, you can see all this for free. And if you're selling one of these, you can upload a picture of your car and get the vehicle score basically imprinted onto that photo completely free of charge. You don't even need an account to do this, okay? You just go in, stick the reg number in, and bosh, you're done. As you can see, all the MOTs are here. You can see how the results of the MOT have impacted the score. It really is a great tool. And at the end, if you want to get your vehicle history report, you've got two options there. Salvage Plus report for just £2.97 or the ultimate report for £8.97. If you use the code JIM10 at checkout, you'll get 10% off either of those two searches. And full disclosure, I'm a shareholder in Vehicle School. I love it. There's still lots of work to get it absolutely perfect, but we're getting there, folks. So onto the article, you're seeing this at the same time I'm seeing it. I haven't read any of this before, I haven't looked at it before, so I want you to get my honest reaction. And number 25, Hyundai i10. I'm going to whiz through some of these, okay, but that's a reliability rating of 85%. Voxel Corsa 2014 to 2019 at number 24, reliability of 86.6%. Number 23 is the 2008 to 17 Ford Fiesta. Um, petrol Fiesta suffered fewer issues than diesel models, 27% compared with 33%, and were quicker and less costly to fix. Suspension faults are most common complaint, followed by problems with the aircon brakes, electrics, and steering. I have to say, one common thread you always seem to see in these reliability surveys is that petrols tend to be more reliable than diesels and the reason for that in my opinion is because modern diesels have a hell of a lot of technology on them to basically get them producing the mpg and the performance figures that they do um, whilst keeping the emissions really low so there's a lot more technology involved in a diesel car a modern diesel car than in an old one and certainly have a lot more than there is in a modern petrol car. So there's essentially more to go wrong. The other thing, with especially with small cars, people will buy small diesel cars and they use it as their round town runaround. Diesels need to be run, folks. Diesels need a decent mileage. People using them to do a three-mile school run there and back twice a day. You've got the wrong car. You need a petrol or a hybrid. Don't get a diesel for short runs. Number 22, the Hyundai i20, 2015 to 2020. Um, surprised that's not higher up the list, but it's not. 21% of i20 owners told us their car had gone wrong in the previous 24 months. Most common issues were related to bodywork, relatively quick and cheap to repair. There are also some reports of problems with battery, gearbox, clutch and interior trim. Number 21 is the Polo, 2009 to 2017, 88.7% reliability rating. Once again, the petrol one's the one to go for with the Polo. Only 22% of those developed faults compared to 43% of the diesel models that people responded to in the survey with. Number 20 is the Peugeot 207, that's 2006 to 2022. You can get those cars dirt cheap nowadays as well. Uh, 32 percent of owners so told us their car suffered a problem but relatively few of the issues were serious or expensive to fix an impressive 89 percent of cars could still be driven and had their faults rectified in a day or less even better 11 percent of the work was done for free and those who did pay shelled out less than 500 quid a fault number 19 is the hyundai i20 from 2009 to 15 uh, number 18 is the audi a1 2010 to 2018 
15% of the A1s in our survey had a fault with owners telling us the problem areas were the battery, bodywork, fuel system, gearbox clutch, and non-engine electrics and suspension. So pretty much anything could go wrong with it. Uh, the majority of defects were minor though. All cars remained drivable and nearly 75% were resolved in less than a week. Number 17 is the Skoda Fabia 2015-21. to 21. Um, Aircon and battery issues are the most common complaints on this, so not a massive issue, I would say. Uh, number 16 is the Mini Hatchback, 2014 to present. Petrol minis are far more robust than diesels. Where have we heard that before? Uh, with just 13% suffering a fault compared with 40% of the diesels. The electrics, engine, gearbox and clutch are the main causes of complaint. As said before, a lot of these diesel issues are going to be because people have simply bought the wrong car. They should have bought a petrol. Number 15 is the Toyota Yaris. I thought they would be higher up than that. 91.9% .9 reliability. This is the 2006 to 2011 model. Battery issues were the only issue to afflict the 19% of Yaris's reported in on our survey. Even though 25% of the cases were rendered undrivable or were put right in the day or less, Repair bills ranging from 51 quid to 500 quid. Battery issues on what could be a 15-year-old car. Check this out. Number 14 is the Nissan Micra 2002 to 2010. Very cheap to own and easy to fix when it goes wrong. 92% reliability. Problems with battery, bodywork, electrics, exhaust and gearbox clutch. Again, 2002-2010 car, battery, bodywork and exhaust. What car's not going to have problems with the exhaust when it gets to that age, really? Uh, number 13, Dacia Sandero, 2013-2020. to 2020. Fordability is a key selling point of Dacia models and philosophy also holds true when it comes to fixing its faults. Dacia fixed 29% of the faults for free and no bills top 300 quid. That's very good. Number 12 is the Kia Picanto, 2007 to 2017. Obviously sharing quite a lot with that Hyundai i10. 92.2% uh, on that one. Kia Rio at number 11, 92.6%. Number 10 is the Hyundai i10, 2014 to 2020. They're saying the older version of this car is actually more dependable than the current one. Owners told us that 21% of the i10s had a defect. The biggest areas of complaint were brakes, electrics, gearbox and clutch. Number 9 is the C1, 2014 to present. I did a video recently where I talked about the best cars for young drivers and new drivers to get into. And this was on that list. They're just so simple there's not a massive amount to go wrong and when it does it tends to not cost very much it's also group bugger rule on the car insurance so you're in luck there too likewise we looked at the skoda city go which is basically a vw up and they say at me uh 93.3 percent on that one then honda jazz at number seven 2008 to 2015 it's aging well with just 14 percent of the cars in the survey having any kind of hiccup problem areas included aircon battery bodywork and engine mazda 2 at number six 2007 to 2015 mazda 2 is another car that's aging gracefully only eight percent of the cars we were told about suffered a fault the only areas of concern were electric systems associated with the engine number five is that vw up that i just mentioned 2012 to present number four is the hyundai ix20 2010 to 2019 also known as the kia venga although the kia has a slightly different lid on it um what car reliability of 97 percent phenomenal number three is the suzuki swift 2010 to 2017 Brilliant little cars, the Swift. Absolutely brilliant. Massively underrated, I think, as well. Battery issues were the only problem suffered by Swift owners, with 6% of the cars affected. 98.1% reliability. Number two is the Toyota Yaris again, but this is the 2011 to 2020. Previous generation of the Yaris is an extremely dependable car. Just 5% of the Yaris models in our survey suffered a glitch. The only area of concern was the suspension. And number one is the Honda Jazz. It's 2015 to 2020 model uh, with a faultless performance. The previous generation of Honda Jazz is the most reliable older small car you can buy. Owners told us that not a single one of their cars put a foot wrong. That meant none of them had to deal with any unexpected bills or time off the road. There you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed that one. Please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Please check out Vehicle School at vehiclescore.co.uk. Uh, obviously, I'll put the link to this article from What Car in the video description as well. And uh, thanks for them for, for putting this together and for the Motor Easy survey. And all that's left to say is see you in the next one.